um, some of these, if you can see, you'll kind of know where I'm going with what we're going to do with the texture this next time. Basically, see that edge that it's got all those little frosty looking trees? That's what we're going to be doing. This is a painting of the Scottish Highlands. And so when we can get the, um, the paint at a certain dryness, we can add little bursts of water with a brush. And it's going to, right along here. And it's going to open up a thick patch of paint for us. So I've got another example here. So it looks a little bit different. So I like to use forcing a burst for a strategic purpose, to create an opening um, in the paint so it's lighter in value. It creates a very interesting irregular edge, which that's what we're after with the landscape, because everything is so irregular. So all of these little dots and dabs were put in with forcing a burst, okay? So let's show you how to do that. I'm gonna just stick with my one inch brush because I'm gonna go into this farthest back mountain range. And notice how we began. We started with our sky and we're gonna work forward now. We kind of jumped to the chase a little bit with our water and a little bit of shadow area in our, <coughs> in our land mass, but I always start from the background to the foreground. So we're gonna take that farthest away mm -hmm. mountain range and we're gonna do that what on what again, just like we did the sky. So, because of that, you need to make sure that that sky is dry before you start painting it in. So we'll get our hair dryers going and hopefully we won't blow a fuse anywhere. But I had to dry mine so I could stay one step ahead of you, you all. And if I go beyond that pencil line and where the paint line is, that's okay. I'm just going to extend where that's going to be. Okay, so that's pretty evenly wet. Now I'm going to grab a smaller brush. I'm going to grab a number 10 round. Okay, what am I going to start with? The cerulean blue, what's up in my sky. But I'm going to alter it just a little bit. The opposite of blue is orange. So let's just temper that a little bit with a little bit of orange, just to knock it back a little bit. And I just grabbed ever so little, but look at how it changed that color. The opposite. So I'm gonna start with a fairly thin value, and because I'm putting it into wet on wet, it's obviously going to dilute again. So when you're working wet on wet, it looks rich and juicy, and oh, you think the color's gonna be just perfect, but then all of a sudden it dries, and it's like, where did my color go? Well, it's because we're commingling it with more water. So it's getting diluted again. It's a thin amount here, and then getting diluted a second time on the page. But doing it like this gives me a long time to play with this, and that's what I want to do. So, what did you add to the cerulean blue? The orange. Oh, I just went to orange. Okay, blue and you. orange, thank I came you. over to my permanent orange. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so now with that, I want to get it a little bit more contoured, um, especially towards the bottom. So I'm going to have more saturated pigment. I'm going to grab a little bit more cerulean blue. I could switch to another blue and I might add a little extra to it. And a little more orange and there's enough yellow in that orange to create it to look a little bit more on the green side. Always use the tip of your brush. I wouldn't want to go like here to try to hold this edge because it's going to scumble along the back side of my brush. So I either move the position of my paper or move my hand. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to get a little bit more interest and depth into the bottom part of this mountain range, way in the background. Now, you could probably use a little salt to kind of create a, you know, an interesting little texture. But this is so far in the distance that not a lot's gonna show up, right? 
that might be better for something closer in the foreground. But I am going to start to play around with this. It's a little bit wet, but it's going to give me a little opportunity to mess with it. I'm just going to go in with a little hooker's green now into that cerulean blue. It's really dense. Thick color, and as this is drying, I'm just going to plant some trees. And I don't, I, in some areas, this is closer here, so they would be bigger strokes, and they would get ever so tiny further back. Now, with the wetness that's on it right now, those are probably going to just disintegrate and, and it's, it's going to disappear. So I have to be in tune with what's happening on my page. And I like to call that participating with the painting. You are watching what's happening, you're adding something, you're figuring out, oh, it's a little too wet there, that's gonna dissolve. So you're participating with what's going on. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that. I'm okay, here. don't mm -hmm. worry. Mm -hmm. I'm liking that color real well, but I'm, I'm almost thinking I want to add something a little bit more neutral in it in some areas as well. So let's kind of neutralize that out a little bit more by adding a little bit more orange. So often when we want to change a color, we go to one of our darks. You know, if we want to get darker, but it's interesting how with a, the with a dark blue, if you add yellow or orange to it, a lighter color, because it's neutralizing it, it's a complementary color, it makes it darker. It's just amazing how it works like that. So that's kind of a neat color. Let's plant some trees in that color for a variety. And they're tinier over here because that's moving away. See, this is kind of the closest part right here to, to the viewer. And I'm still using the tin. These uh, Jack Richardson brushes are just, the tips stay forever. So they really, you can really get some nice tiny little effects with them. Do you use anything special to clean them and shape them afterwards? Oh, that's a good, very good question. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, just, I just rinse them out. Every, if I'm starting a portrait though, I will clean my brushes. And I'll show you how to clean a brush because it's rather interesting. Um, that's the only time I really get the soap out. And it's just hand soap, like liquid hand soap or even bar soap. I'll, I'll share with you how to do that. Um, but no, I, I really don't. I just rinse them out really good and put them back in my, my case and, and that's that. I got one of these brushes from you last time yep. and it's become my favorite brush. It just keeps its point. It yes. does everything and, you said it and is I going to do. And I think because they're synthetic brushes, when you're buying a sable brush, which you're spending so much money for, when I was in college and I had little kids at home, my watercolor instructor insisted I buy a $100 sable brush. Oh. It was the worst brush I ever had mm. because the sable, now think about it, the sable is a hair and every time you dip it in the water, the little lanolin at the bottom, at the base of that strand is getting dissolved. So eventually that tip opens up. There's nothing you can do to make it go back. And um, so I spent $100 when I had two little kids, you know, and it's like, that was ridiculous. So synthetic brushes are great. Also, when I'm going to buy a brush, I'll go into an art store and I'll take it over to the bubbler and I'll, I'll rinse off because they starch them to keep the tip. They're always hard when you get them. I'll take it and I'll do that. I'll flick out the water and I'll make sure that it comes back to a tip, that it's not separated like that or anything. So I, I rinse it out in the bubbler, I get it good and wet, and I do that. And people think, oh, this is gross. <laughs> but look at it. If it comes back to a perfect tip, that's a good brush for you then. So I want to get some thinner of the cerulean blue, and now I'm going along the edge to kind of break that that solid line that I originally put down with my water wash. 
just to have a few little bump ups to make it look like it's irregular with trees in the background. Still using that number 10. And it's pretty much true cerulean blue at this point because I wanted a variety again. And let's switch it back into a different one now. And I do have a drying edge where, where that initial water wash went. And I'm just kind of going over the top of it. I might have to add a little bit more in later to, just to cover up that, that line. But now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna keep going with my solid color and I'm just gonna try to add a little bit more dark because it's soaked in a little bit, it's drying. So when I go into it now, it's still going to be a little bit darker and richer in value. So look at that variety that I'm building up here. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. I want to get a little, I want this hollow, this little dip here, I want to get a little, it's still kind of wet there, but I want to get a little bit more pigment in there so it looks like the land is kind of going into a little alcove and then coming back out. Just by planting a few more trees. And a little bit more of that neutralized blue with the orange. So it looks a little bit more on the green side. And here was a little bit of a, a little area where the water puddled as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more pigment there so it looks like I've got a variation in the land mass. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more true cerulean blue so it just doesn't look like a line of frills up at the top. I'm gonna to extend that down a bit. And you know, I didn't plan any of this. I'm just participating with it and seeing what it needs as I go along. And look at how much time I've had to, to work this area. Now I told you we were gonna do these bursts but we're not gonna do it in this section back here because it's so far away, we're gonna wait till it gets closer to the picture plane, okay, closer to the viewer. So I'm thinking this looks good. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer till the dries right there and get a little bit heavier handed with my paint, but that's gotta dry right in that spot. So let me hold this up so you can kind of see what it looks mm -hmm. like. Wow. Mm -hmm. See the variation? Mm -hmm. And I started with the same blue that I used in the sky. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So really the only two colors you used was the cerulean and the orange. And I added a little bit of hooker's green at one well, point right. too, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it could be sad green as well. It could be sad green as well. Because then I'll use that same green, I think it was hooker's, uh, but either one would be fine. Um, I'll use some of that green in other areas too as I come forward. So we're just going to do that farthest back mountain range. Wet it down first, start adding a basic color, and then as it's drying, take your 10 or 8, whatever size is best for the, sh the size of that mountain range you have, and start planting some little trees, okay?